Oh my god, it is a beautiful Thursday morning, everyone. And we Nobody have a very exciting program. The program continues today. It is indeed November 3rd. Uh, eventually, Amina, you will be able to speak. Um, guys, it's a great time to be alive. But Amina before... can't hear you. I know. Uh, she can't hear me either. Oh, man. Really, Amina? You can't hear nothing? I can't hear Ah, oh, man, what a wrap. All right, Amina, we'll get to you. JT, huh? how are you doing today? You know what? I'm doing fine. Yeah. I went to bed at 3.40. I woke up at 5.00 mm-hmm. a.m. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I could have been happier. Let's go, because today is a great time, and we're going to have a great show Why lined up for you. But more importantly, it is time Why for the greatest standing? moment in Morning Buzz history. It is time Sit for out. Campbell to deliver the greatest sports report in the history of sports report. Because I'll tell you, last night I opened my phone, a lot of things were happening across a lot of different leagues. Good things, bad things, controversy, teams being sold, teams not being sold, players winning, players losing, scoring and not scoring. And only one person can tell us what the recap is. So please take it away as I give access to Amina to hear the show. Thank you, Isaiah. Like you said, history into orbit. Four Houston Astros pitchers combined to no hit the Phillies last night in game four. Houston joins Don Larson as pitchers to not allow a hit in the fall classic as Larson threw a perfect game in 1956. Game five in Philly tonight. NBA action. Knicks lose 112 to 99 to the Atlanta Hawks. Jalen Brunson had 20 for New York. Tonight, the Nets are in the nation's cap. Excuse me. The, Net- the Nets are in the nation's capital tomorrow night. And the Knicks are in Philadelphia as well. Hockey action tonight. The Rangers are home to take on the Boston Bruins. The Islanders are in St. Louis. And the Devils are in Western Canada to take on Kyron McDavid and the Edmonton Oilers. Thursday night football, it's the Eagles and the Texans. But more NFL news came out yesterday afternoon as Dan Snyder is in the process of selling his franchise the Washington Commanders. MSU women's soccer defeats Rutgers Camden in penalty kicks last night to advance to the NJAC Championship against Rowan on Saturday. Field hockey season came to an end last night with a loss to the number three ranked Provs 6-1 to one in Glassboro. And, of course, tonight, volleyball gets a rematch with those Provs in the NJAC semifinals. As last year, the Red Hawks fell in five sets in the NJAC championship to the reigning defending coverage champion, Rowan Provs, as well. This has been your 7 a.m. sportscast. I'm Campbell Dobbin, reporting for 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. Campbell, that was electric. But it's electric. Dude. No, stop that. That song's annoying. It's stupid and it should be canceled. It but, is- whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Guys, we have a special, special moment because we are in the presence of not just a regular Amina. I would say a brand new Amina, a changed Amina, an Amina that is operating at an all time high. Amina, you're a year older, huh? Happy birthday, Amina. Happy birthday. birthday. Oh, wait, everyone, hold on, hold on. Let's redo that. That was very just low energy. It's Amina's birthday, all right? Happy birthday. Happy birthday, like a Ghostbusters member. Happy birthday. No, no, no. Happy birthday, Amina, how does it feel? You know, it's a great time to be alive. You're 22? Wow, congrats, Amina. She's like a year older than 21. Whoa, that's <laughs> math. Um, I failed algebra one, guys. Um, now, <laughs> Amina, as part of your celebration, why don't you do a news report? Because that is very rewarding. My best <laughs> gift I can give you guys. Thank you. All right. So in national news, North Korea continues missile barrage with a suspected ICBM which is an intercontinental ballistic missile. Um, The North fired three more missiles, one of which set off an alert in Japan a day after launching a record of at least 23 missiles in a single day. The tests are seen as an effort by North Korean leader Kim Jong-un to develop his regime's nuclear arsenal, pressure the U.S. to ease crippling sanctions and gain international acceptance as a nuclear state. The South Korean military said that it had strengthened surveillance and monitoring in close cooperation 
with the U.S. and that it was maintaining military readiness for all situations. And in state news, questions remain regarding how a man accused of shooting two Newark police officers was able to evade authorities for nearly a day. Officials say that the officers were shot when they confronted 30-year-old Kendall Howard, who was wanted for another crime. Howard allegedly escaped into the apartment building. By midnight, d police determined Howard was no longer in the building, but 12 hours later, police swarmed the building again and came back out with Howard. It was not immediate, immediately clear if he had been inside the building the entire time or left and returned. And in local news, on November 8th, Montclair voters will be asked to support a $187.7 million bond reform to fund comprehensive infrastructure improvements throughout our school district. This plan includes improvements at every school as well as athletic and performing arts facilities and includes HVAC and electrical system upgrades, boiler and roof replacements, and other repairs necessary to meet health, safety, and building codes. And looking at the weather today, it is clear with the high of 68 and a low of 43, with a humidity level of 89%, and just moderate air quality with a level of 57. Wow. Amina, that was a very spectacular birthday edition, post-birthday edition yes. of the news reports. What a time to be alive. North Korea continues to be a very interesting place to monitor as that gets a little more scary as the days go on as the, the they seem to be trending worldwide every day at this point because they will not stop launching missiles. Oh, um, man. So we'll see what happens within that situation. But we are going to move on to bills getting paid, apparently. Well, maybe not getting paid. So uh -oh. the Federal Reserve continues a worrisome trend by raising interest rates by three quarters of a point for the fourth straight time. They say that this is necessary to fight high inflation, but also hinted it could soon reduce the size of its rate hikes. The Fed's move boosted its key short-term rate to a range of 3.75 to 4%, its highest level in 15 years. It was also the central bank's sixth rate hike this year. I hate saying the word hike, but that is the term. By doing this so many times, mortgages and other consumers and business loans became increasingly more expensive and have heightened the risk of a recession. In a statement after last meeting, the Fed said that in the coming months, it would consider cumulative impact of its large rate hikes on the economy. It noted that the rate increases take time to fully affect growth and inflation. The Fed's meeting occurred as financial markets and many economists have grown nervous that Chair Jerome Powell will end up leading the central bank to raise borrowing costs higher than needed to tame inflation and will cause a painful recession in the process. It may not be all doom and gloom for the U.S. because our good old friend Powell stressed that the Feds have left the door open to downshifting to half a point hike when it next meets in December. The Fed could then step down even further to a quarter point increase, which is more typically sized rate hike early Early next year guys hmm. i feel like uh, the, the saying is every generation experiences um at least one very huge event and i feel like our generation has experienced about six of them in the span of like five months so this uh, if this continues i i imagine this is going to be the seventh it's just some um, I, I don't it's too much <laughs> it's hard to follow this every time because it's like i i don't know if this is and gonna end up with a good solution or not um and especially if economists which it is their job to monitor money and all those things i don't know if you knew that um but it seems like if they're kind of worried about it we should probably be worried about it as well because you know we're we're all kind of transitioning out of college at some point and going into a recession doesn't seem like a very good plan either I, say, yes, I might i might say something that's related to sports every time the phillies have won a world series there has been a financial crisis so what you're saying is to fill it. Hear me out. It's not even a Philly problem. We need to pick up Philadelphia as a city, move it elsewhere. Just get rid of it. Right? Yeah. yeah. So is that what we're saying? Bob it. Exactly. It's we're going to SpongeBob it. SpongeBob. Call it a plan. Controversy for all the, the Philly uh, students. So, associated you know what? I'm rooting for Houston, Houston, guys. Yep. Not to get into sports topics, but um, Houston it is because I am trying to avoid a recession. Much like, you know, my things are this. I'm trying to make some money and live a long time. I'm not asking for a lot of things. It's just two on my list, and that's all I want. And this seems to be preventing one of them from happening, guys. Not a fan of it. Not a fan of it at all. But more importantly, uh, we are going to switch gears because 
not for nothing, I don't think any of us in this room or in the shadow realm where the birthday lady is are economist experts. So uh, we're just going to deliver you the news and move on. Uh, JT, this one is um, a definitely heavy. a tougher one, a little heavy uh, considering the circumstances, but we do have some sentencing issues with Nicholas Cruz. Yeah. Oh. Brooklyn school shooter Nicholas Cruz formally received a sentence of life without parole Wednesday after families of his 17 slain you victims spent two days berating him as evil, a coward, a monster, and a subhuman oh, who deserves a pain. Sure. Yeah, okay. Cruz watched emotionless as Circuit Judge Elizabeth Scherer pronounced 34 consecutive life sentences one by one, each for the slain and the 17 he wounded during the 2018 massacre at Majority Stoneman Douglas High School in suburban Fort Lauderdale. The judge's voice broke as she read the first sentences, but she gained strength and volume as she moved down the list. Scherer had no other choice in sentencing. The jury in Cruz's three months penalty trial voted... Nine to three on October 13th sentenced him to death. But Florida law requires unanimity for that sentence to be imposed. Some parents and other family members of the slain wept as she spoke. When she finished and Cruz was led from the courtroom, one by one father muttered good riddance. Then they gathered into groups and hugged each other. Cruz, 24, a former Stoneman Douglas High School student, <laughs> pleaded guilty last year to massacre, where he stalked a three-story classroom building for seven minutes firing 140 shots with a semi-automatic rifle. He will be taken within days to Florida Prison Systems Processing Center near Miami before he is assigned to a maximum security facility. Several parents over the two days said they would petition legislature to change state's death penalty law so that jury unanimity is no longer needed for a judge to impose a death sentence. Dr. Elaine Alhadaf whose 14-year-old daughter Alyssa was killed when Cruz fired into her classroom said, quote, do we now have closure? Let me be clear, absolutely not. His daughter was killed. He went on to say, what I see is that the system values this animal's life over the 17 now dead. Worse, we sent the message to, uh, to the next killer out there that the death penalty will not be applied to mass killing. This is wrong. It needs to be fixed immediately. Mm, mm, mm. You know, Amina, I'm going to throw it to you first. What do you do you think that uh, 34 consecutive life sentences is enough? Or is this a case where um, you feel like there could have been more done? I mean, I feel like in this situation, when it comes down to this, I feel like there's only the two options. Um, obviously, he's going to be in prison now forever. But then it's also like it was either that or he got the death penalty. Um I know some people in situations like this, they feel like the death penalty is they look at it as it either being wrong or as the easy way out for the person. So, I mean, I feel like I feel like it is oh, I feel like the penalty he got is fine. Obviously, it's not nothing's ever enough to bring back the people that lost their lives. But I feel like considering this or the death penalty was his only option, I would rather him just be in jail. You know, Amina, I would actually agree with you on this point as well, because at least from what I view it as is like you kind of mentioned it is the death penalty seems like an easy out for the person after they commit such like atrocities. And I feel that making someone suffer for the rest of their life behind bars and hopefully it's a very unpleasant experience for that person. Uh, I feel like that would be more rewarding well i want to say rewarding i don't even know how to say the right word for that but i feel like that would if i was a parent put my mind at better as much peace as it could be instead of them just dying instantly because not for nothing it seemed like all those people that were a part of the situation also suffered so this person should pay for what they have done um and i hope that those 34 life senses are the absolute worst days of this person's lives and they continue to stack pile on top of each other of continuing to be terrible now before we move on to a break because this is a this is a rough topic jt you read the story i'd like to hear your opinions on this one i'm kind of with you and um amino on this um I don't believe in a death penalty for that reason. Number one, I don't believe in stooping to that level. Um, number two, I also don't believe in, like you said, the easy way out. Um, I think that if you commit such an atrocity where it, it's the worst of the worst, the only true way to ensure true justice is there. Whoa. Hi. Hello. Someone needs to relax. Um, <laughs> I believe that 
just spending every waking day just being forced to realize that what she did every single day and i just think that that's more appropriate yeah um guys i think uh now we're gonna take a quick little break here from the show and very quickly before we go to that break um we had a discussion before the show unprompted alana says you know I hope you don't play any Christmas music today. Oh, come on. <laughs> and I didn't have anything to do with Christmas today. I was in a good mood. I was just in a naturally good mood. It's a beautiful Thursday. The show's incredible. JT's here. Campbell's here. Lana's here. Amina's here. Amina's birthday's being... Her birthday week is this week, guys. Yeah, guys. Yeah. You know what? Birthday month. All of November for you, Amina. There I you just, go. I was going to say it anyway, but yeah. But here's the thing. Lana had the audacity to be like... Oh, I just, you better not play Christmas music today. And I wasn't. I already had my my two songs selected. And then, Lana, this is on you. No. This is 100% your fault. You didn't have It to is November that. 3rd, no. and we're playing Chris Brown this Christmas. This is on you. Ooh. That's a good one. Why it is it this to me? It's love you, Lana, but you asked for it. Uh Oh, what a time. The holiday spirits at an all-time high. And this is because of you, Lana, no, once again. You I had nothing to do with this. You forced I... my hand. Campbell said it right. You forced my hand. Where's the Thanksgiving music? You had the goal. Hold on. I got Hold on. Green, Amina, green potatoes, tomatoes. Amina's bought. Okay, that maybe that is the Thanksgiving music. Exactly. That was a good Wow. That was a good one. I got that a remix good. to that if you want to play it. Honestly, that might be <laughs> the greatest Thanksgiving song of all time. Might be the only Thanksgiving Thanksgiving song. National Anthem? 
Wow, that's incredible, guys. And so well, is this take that. Show. Christmas music any day. You know uh, what, Lana? You're just sad. You're a little hurt because the Halloween season is over and good riddance. We got rid of the garbage pile of a holiday. Silence right? went. We we'll move on to bigger and better things. <laughs> Much like the big orange boy's lawyers Somebody who happen to, to have made quite the mess, guys. And by big orange boy, I do mean our former president. Guys, let's not forget, a couple years ago, that was a real storyline within this, within this country's story. It was a very interesting time. There was controversy every day. Well, to be fair, that's still continuing because we do live in the United States. So another week in the U.S. means we have more news coming from the never ending horror story known as the Trump presidency. Lawyers who assisted in efforts to overturn the results of the 2020 election describe an appeal to Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas as key to their chances of success. An email exchange from December 31st, just in time for the holiday season uh, from 2020, shows the lawyers discussing ways to deal to delay the certification of results in Georgia, which was a closely contested state won by Joe Biden. One lawyer, Kenneth Cheesebro, which Joe I mean, Byron? to be fair, that is a terrible name and I probably mispronounced it. So I'm, uh, I don't know. I'm not sorry, Kenneth. What a stupid name. Uh, he suggested that an appeal to Thomas as the justice who handles emergency appeals from Georgia could end up being the key there, as previously mentioned. And then he went on to say, we want to frame things so that Thomas could be the one to issue some sort of stay or other circuit justice opinion saying Georgia is in legitimate doubt. Realistically, our only chance to get a favorable judicial opinion by January 6th, which that's an interesting time, uh, which might hold up the Georgia count in Congress is from Thomas. Another lawyer, John Eastman, responded that he was in agreement saying if Thomas were to act, quote, that may be enough to kick Georgia legislature into gear because I've been getting a lot of calls from them indicating that they're leaning that way. In the end, the Supreme Court wound up rejecting multiple Republican requests to intervene in the election and undo the results. Ah, isn't that great, guys? We just listened to some Christmas music and went back to our favorite storyline of the year. Donald Trump stuff, guys. What you gave me like? like you gave me like a minute of serotonin and then like just stole it. You're the Grinch. Why? Why you you steal? You what stole my serotonin since song. you started playing Rookie Christmas music. One. What did I do wrong? Mr. Grinch. I I did nothing wrong today. I don't know about that. You know who else said that? Okay. Boy. Yeah. <laughs> What happened on January 6th was an act. No. Um, okay, <laughs> guys, let's get into this story before we get into some very dangerous short, uh, waters. Um, so this is very interesting, and I feel like this confirms uh, the confirmation that everyone thought that, indeed, there was no election to be stolen. Uh, and more importantly, that somehow, no matter what happens, nothing is going to happen with Donald Trump. I mean, at this point, we have so much information about the man, and uh, it's been a great TV ratings boost. It's been a great entertainment ride. But at the end of the day, it seems to me like we're about like two years into the investigations or so. Nothing will happen. Mm -hmm. Nothing will continue to happen. Mm -hmm. And we are going to have this revolving door of stories where it just gets worse and worse. And at some point, it's probably going to say at one point, Donald Trump set up a ladder climbed up the ladder, put a baby on a table, and then elbow dropped the baby through the table. And then no one's going to care because this is the type of things that happen within this country. He can do anything. He could say anything and nothing will happen. No, this is all mean, meaningless. I just, ah, sad. JT, hmm. do you have any hope? Not at all. No? I'm kind of sick. Wait, of guys, the holiday season. No. Hope is on pillows everywhere. It says hope. You know uh, what? Yeah, you know we're what? not suburban moms, okay? You Says you, Lana. What is that supposed to mean? Just because she's white, she's I'd like suburban? to announce she's from. I am Texas. now a suburban mother. Um, hey. well, you live in Sussex County now, Lana. This could be you. You could put a nice no hope pillow. Aww. Warm up the fire. Sh shop at um, Hallmark. Get the for... nice socks. Uh, no. Hallmark, I'm yeah. Get the live, laugh, love pictures. No, Mountain Creek instead. Thank you. Mountain Creek? She'll have the little, um, have the little ceramics. Mountain Creek? See, that seems like a lot of things that I'm not interested in. No. Mountain Creek? It sounds ridiculous. It sounds it's made up. It sounds like a fairy tale. See, that's the thing. I don't know if you know this, Lana. I don't like the snow. I'm not going to purposely ski on some snow. I'm good. I don't like the you want to put either. me on a beach somewhere, enjoy the nice weather. Got you. No, you're scared. I'm not trying to snowboard or ski. I can't even ride a bike, JT. This seems like things that I'm not good at. Why would I put myself through that? I can't either, but I'd still like to try. You ride a horse, though. 
That's so of, see, that's kind of like that's not the edgy. Thing. Anyway, I got we're going off track here. Uh, we're going back to the story. Yeah, let's do that. Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas was seen as a key. What does that say to you about our Supreme Justices at this point? If that is considered, you know, if we really get one of them on our side, we might have a we might have a chance, guys. JT, hmm. what do you Not think? Not surprised. Not surprised. He he is up there with um Kanye and Candace mm. Owens. Uh, I think you mispronounced her name. No, is it something it, else? No. Don't tempt me. <laughs> oh, man. What a time to be alive. Uh, what a time, what a time. Yeah. yeah he is up there with uh, Mr. Ruckus and Fed Company. Um, yes. That's an interesting top five of people right there. Uh, Lana, what do you think about this situation? Because you've been on the bus for quite some time, and we've been kind of covering these stories relating to our former president. And um, it seems like we just have another update on confirmation of the absolute garbage of a human being that he is. Yes. Uh, he's can get away with anything and it sucks that that's how it works because it's not right um you have people doing such like minor offenses and getting lifetime sentences and then this man does what he does and gets like what, a slap on the wrist and told to yeah bad don't do that again and he's like okay and does it again anyway he doesn't even get the bad don't do that again he goes oh what are we gonna do he's like my mom when she gets no you know what happens it's like you know how you see some crazy stuff that, like if you're walking in new york you're like oh man that's crazy and then you walk away that's kind of what happens you don't even do the oh man that's crazy you do like the one look and then the, i didn't see that no like the crazy <laughs> like homeless person that's just kind of, kind of i have saying stories things. Of what i've seen in that's new york, what i would I don't even think i can repeat them on air Probably not. Because and I've looked at it, and then I didn't. And then the last time I was there, I was with Joe Virgo. We saw some wild something happening outside of Penn Station. And he goes, JTGG. I'm like, nope. Nope. You he goes, pretend like you don't see wait, it. Is that when I was looking for it? No, that was the second time. Oh. And he, he, he goes, he goes, but wait. I'm like, nope. We didn't see nothing. Nothing at all. Mm-mm. Hey, guys, very quickly. Um, I don't know if you know this, but apparently Mountain Creek isn't just a wintertime thing. No, it's not. It, huh. It's also a water park in the summer. Yeah, and apparently a fun hike in the summer as well. Mountain, to, Creek, sounds, to Mountain Creek sounds like a fictional homework location. No, it, That's what I'm saying. It sounds like the concept of a movie, okay, it, and then it's like the farmer guy and the girl that used to be a lawyer in New York, and then it's like they get trapped inside this room because it's a winter storm. They're like, I hate you, and then suddenly they get to know each other. They're like, we're not that different at all, and then it's like oh man i think i'm in love with you and then they you know that thing happens Uh, wait very quickly though i've never seen amina get more excited than the concept of this idea that's a movie Um, to answer (laughs) the question of our general manager annabelle yes it it is the grounds of action park and is still owned by the that sounds that sounds wrong that sounds like it's a like a burial ground where people have died uh yeah actually six people did die Uh, it just anytime it just sounds built upon oh Um, (laughs) oh, no people did die there see Um, a burial ground like the most dangerous like see that i'm never skiing if there's a possibility of ghosts lana that's my one rule. Sorry about it. Look, That's okay. just how it is. It is what it is. It's an 80s spot to go if you survive. In the 80s? You weren't even alive. No. Right. Annabella says it was a park of lawsuits. I, yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. It's also called a uh, class action park for <laughs> see, see, that's a better see, name. I'm not getting involved with this, Lana. You see, you talked me out of it, and I wasn't even into it. <laughs> Good Lord. Anyways, JT, uh, you know what I'm not into either, apparently? What? Uh, opioids? I'm gonna give you a B minus for that. <laughs> I tried, and then I realized, oh, that was a very, very rough transition. My bad, guys. You know I tried. You've, I tried. Had, you've had a lot worse, but nothing worse than this story I'm about to read. Two, the two largest U.S. pharmacy chains, CVS Health and Walgreens Company, announced agreements in principle Wednesday to pay about five billion each to settle lawsuits nationwide over the toll of opioids. And a lawyer said Walmart, a third pharmacy behemoth. Is in discussions for the deal. Nice word choice, Isaiah. I didn't do that. That's on you. Oh, that's on you. You don't. You might not remember this, but I said, you know what, JT, we're gonna give you some more experience, build up your producing woes. You know, you know, make you stronger. And then you left that behemoth. When have you ever heard the word? When have you, in casual conversation, have ever said the word behemoth? I can't say on there. Oh, good. Uh, back <laughs> the to the story. Perspective settlements are part of a shift in the legal landscape. 
<laughs> surrounding the opioid epidemic. Instead of suspense over whether companies in the drug industry would be held account, uh, be held to account through trials or settlements, the big question is now how their money will be used or whether it will make a difference in fighting a crisis that has only intensified. Courtney Gary Allen, organize, organizing director of the Maine Recovery Advocacy Project, said, quote, it's one more culprit of the ovioise, ov overdose crisis Jesus, that is having to pay their dues. Average Americans have been paying it for a long time. The plans spring from mediation involving a group of state attorneys general before they move ahead, state and then local governments will need to sign on. So far, the detailed formal deals have not been presented to the government entities so they can decide whether or not to join. Under tentative plans, CVS would pay $4.9 billion to locate governments and about $130 million to Native American tribes over a decade. Walgreens would pay $4.8 billion to governments and $155 million to tribes over 15 years. The exact amount depends on how many government joined the deals. Walgreens said in a statement, as one of the largest pharmacy chains in the nation, we remain committed to being part of the solution, and this settlement framework will allow us to keep our focus on the health and well-being of our customers and patients while making positive contributions to address the opioid crisis. Purdue Farmer, the maker of Oxycontin, and members of the Sackler family fam who own the company have proposed a settlement that would involve up to $6 billion in cash, plus the value of the company, which would be turned into a new entity with its profits used to combat the epidemic. That plan has been put on hold by a court. That is a lot of money. Like a lot of money just being thrown around. And from what it seems to me, nobody really knows exactly what they're doing with that money. It just seems like, let's just throw money here. Throw yeah, money here. I mean, it really is. <laughs> Once you get into billions of dollars worth of settlements, I feel like you're crossing a threshold. Because oftentimes when you hear of settlements, it's always like $10 million. And like the highest settlement I've seen in a while is probably like $300 million or something. We're talking billions of dollars for this, for this going on. And, and I'm curious to know, well, like you mentioned, where exactly is this money going to once the settlement cash is handed out? Like, wh who is? I don't. That's very interesting to see where what happens. We're gonna get there. this money because I don't think even companies just have that type of money just like lying in a vault somewhere. You know what I also find interesting as well about this is that it's a hundred thirty million dollars going directly to Native American tribes over a decade. Uh, I find that just to be very interesting. You know. It's a nice little nugget there, and I'm I'm curious to see if that really helps Native Americans um prosper in the near future because um not for nothing they were here first and um they yes. have been through very traumatic times and we've, we've oftentimes forgotten about within this country. We've done a lot to them, and this is the least we can do. It's not we. This is a CVS thing. I've uh, <laughs> I've been nothing but respectful to Native Americans. Okay. I'm a supporter. This is the least CVS can do. <laughs> Did you just say you're a subordinate? I said I'm a supporter. Support. Let's relax, JT, all right? Let's, let's not try to cancel me today, all right? Oh, We're not going to get... No one is getting canceled in Amina's birthday month, all right? It is a time of celebration. You know what? I think canceling you would be her birthday gift. She's been trying to do it since she got on this show. I, I don't I think that's true. I've been trying to do it. Exactly. That it just that, naturally happens for him. This is true. This is a problem that I have. Um... Uh, yeah, guys, what a time to be alive. We'll see what happens with all that money. That's billions of dollars, man. So is the jackpot. Um, man, I wish I could win that. Um, all right, guys, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we got some stories revolving around the upcoming winter months and even CBS. Ugh. And not for good things either. CBS has been taking a lot of L's recently. Anyways, we'll be back here on the Morning Buzz. And uh, yeah, enjoy life. I heard the COVID-19 vaccine. Do you really know about the long Did term. you chatting on the internet about that? There's a lot.
And the program is back. This has been a spectacular show. I mean, this is this might be the greatest morning buzz in morning buzz history. I, I mean, so feel the it. energy is electric. Alana has celebrated the holidays already. Campbell's delivered an electric sports cast. JT has said some interesting things. Shout out to Candace Owens. And Amina is celebrating her birthday month. I mean, what? It doesn't get much better than this guy. I also feel the need to say this every time Kate Nixon's show mo comes on. Um, sweetheart, you need to update that. Listen, your also, not also, Thursday, what? Kate, whatever you did to get your promo to air every single day, I, I need your strategy because I, I don't know if I've heard a single promo of mine. This is disgraceful. I'm, mean, you know what? No offense, Kate. I'm getting sick and tired of you. I'm getting sick and tired of you and your show. Thank you very much. It's not That's even Thursday so mean, anymore. It's Kate. five. It's um, who's Kate? Friday huh? at five p.m. Just because you don't know your DJs doesn't mean we don't know our DJs. Okay, we we are we are. Do I owe a Do I owe an apology to Kate? Yeah. Yes, you do. Hold on. Let me get. Let me get into character. <laughs> oh gosh. <sighs> hey guys, I just want to say um, I've been going through a lot of mental things recently, and um, I apologize to you, Kate, because what I did was wrong, and. It should be taken seriously. With that being said, All right, I resign. Start I resign. And this is the top 10 worst Nardwar. YouTube apologies. <laughs> I tried to be authentic, everyone. Number um, one. Number two. We have three. Isaiah Ramirez sitting Wait, right below Logan is Paul. Number, oh, man. I couldn't beat out Logan Paul. <laughs> man. Not yet. Remember that time? What an interesting redemption story, I guess, <laughs> if you want to call that for that man. We, I thought he was done. Apparently not. And now he's a boxer. Apparently. And a wrestler. Oh. In WWE. Cool. Campbell, are you aware of this? Yes. All right. Sports guy. All right, guys. Let's let's move on to more important things. We don't need to talk about Logan Paul. Please we do. don't need to talk about the holiday months ensuing. Actually, I guess we kind of do. Oh. As we enter the cold. You know what? That was thick good. air. Yes. I try. You know, I'm pretty good at my job. Uh, <laughs> residents across the state are bundling up and turning their heaters to an all-time high, which means more expensive bills. But some New Jersey residents will get $336 million worth of assistance in paying these bills from the federal government. The White House announced yesterday that New Jersey will receive $153.3 million for low-income home energy assistance program to help pay winter heating bills and $183.1 million in rebates for homeowners buying energy efficient appliances, making their buildings more energy efficient. More than half of the funding will come from President Joe Biden's climate change and health care law, and the rest will be from bipartisan infrastructure law. The current application period for the program began October 1st and is open until June 30th, 2023. And the program is limited to those. Oh, God, I'm saying program. Yeah. Who am I? <laughs> oh, program. God. Oh, grandma. No, man. Who've corrected those <laughs> uh, to those who make 60 percent of the state <laughs> medium income? This is disgraceful. For a family of four, the limit is $79,944 a year. For an individual, it's $41,568. Eligible residents must pay their own heating bills either directly or to a utility company or to a landlord as part of their rent. The rebate program is designed to help make program. Oh, it's designed to help make homes and appliances more energy efficient. Individual households could get as much as $2,000 for making improvements to their dwellings that reduce energy use by at least 20%, and $4,000 if they save at least 35%. The rebates double for low- and moderate-income homes. Owners of apartment buildings could receive up to $400,000. Now, for the household installing energy-efficient appliances, appliances, such as heat pumps, stoves, and clothes dryers, could get up to $14,000 in rebates. They will cover the entire cost for household, making no more than 80% of the area of median income and 50% for those earning 80% to 150%. Now, a lot of percentages, a lot of dollars, and a lot of programs, which are supposed to say programs. I don't know who did it, but you should be fired. I think we could actually figure out who did it. Nah, we don't need to go that far. Honestly, it probably was me. Um, Because last night was a very interesting night. Now... This is a very interesting thing, and I'm glad that people of low income are able to have this kind of program and help offset the increasing prices of literally everything. So uh, a little goes a long way, and this seems to be a little bit more than a little. So I, I think that's really nice. It's really nice. JT, mm -hmm. what do you think about this program going on? Program. Um, <clears throat> the expensive bills part? No me gusta. Um, wow, that's a hot take. 
Uh, yeah, I know, right? I know a lot of people love Bills so much, but I, for one, hate them. I think they're stupid, and anybody who likes Bills, actually, um, all jokes aside, there actually are some people who get a little um, superiority rush paying Bills. That is a thing. Seriously? Yeah. You you will run into some crazy people. Um, anyway, uh, nonetheless, we're not here to talk about those people. We're here to talk about these people who um will benefit at least from the um good that this program will do. Um, with these upcoming winter months, it's very unpredictable. It's already brick, and we've barely entered November. Um, it was brick the first week of October. I walked down in those 40 degrees before October even hit, so I can only imagine what these winter months are going to look like. So, in all honesty. Even if, you know, heating bills is a little more expensive, we might need a little bit of it because I spent last a winter with no heat and that was not fun. And that was a pretty tame winter. So I can only imagine what we're doing. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yes, we... Bundling up season, as they say, oh, JT. Yeah. Yes, sir. Get a couple blankets. A lot of blankets. I like how that's sometimes people's solution to things is you're cold, just get a blanket. Be like, yeah. you don't think I thought of that already? Um, no. Wow. Um, all right, JT. Let's move on to our last story of hour one, which is a uh, common CBSL. You know, does CBS stick the L of the day? We shall find out. Mm. CBS and his former president, Leslie Manu, Moon, oh God, Moon will pay $30.5 million as a part of an agreement with the New York Attorney General's office, which says the network's executive conspired with a Los Angeles police captain to conceal sexual assault allegation against Moons. Under the deal announced Wednesday by Attorney General Leada James, the broadcast giant is required to pay $22 million to shareholders and another $6 million for sexual harassment and assault programs. Moons will have to pay $2.5 million, all of which will benefit stockholders who the Attorney General said were initially kept in the dark about these allegations. A spokesperson for Paramount Global, who which owns CBS, by the way, said it was pleased to resolve this matter without any admission of liability or wrongdoing, end quote, adding to the matter, quote, matter involved alleged misconduct by CBS's former CEO, who was terminated for cause in 2018 and does not relate in any way to the current company. In October 2017, the hashtag MeToo movement began to pick up as steam as media mogul Harvey Weinstein and others in the entertainment industry were accused of sexual abuse. The following month, Los Angeles police received a complaint against Moons, who less than three weeks later called the movement a, quote, watershed moment during a Variety magazine summit. A Los Angeles Police Department later identified the captain as Corey Palka, who retired last year in the rank of commander after 34 years in the department. He had served as commanding officer of the Hollywood Division for more than three years, and he did not respond to multiple requests for comments on Thursday. In November 2017, a woman told police that she had been sexually assaulted by Moons in the 1980s before he was employed by CBS in 1995. According to a gen- attorney general's report, she also said he was subjected to sexual misconduct and retaliation in the workplace. The LAPD said Wednesday it was conducting an investigation into the conduct of the captain and was cooperating with New York officials. CBS is also required under a deal with the Attorney General's Office to reform its human resources practices and sexual harassment. The New York Attorney General's Office identified CBS Senior Executive Vice President and Chief Communication Officer Gil Schwartz as the executive who nearly sold $8.9 million in stocks. Schwartz has since died. What a mess, man. What an entire mess. Amina. I'm going to throw it to you for the first person here. What do you think about this story? Because I feel like there's a lot to unpack within it. First, I always think it's very interesting when somebody, a part of a big company or organization, has allegations against them, but then their employees or people within that company go that far to help them cover it. Because I feel like as like as a company like I feel like if I was like a boss and then I found out one of my employees has sexual harassment complaints I'm not gonna sit there and try even no matter how much of like a good worker they are I'm not gonna sit there and try to cover it up for them right I don't understand people's commitment to people like that it's 
like if you know the details or if you're at least aware of some of the details, not for nothing, I, I might be controversial here, but I wouldn't back that guy. If I'm being honest, I mean, I don't understand who is taking his side and then sticking up for this man. Like, how do you go to sleep and be like, well, I feel good about myself today. And this was, that was a good decision, you know? It it's just me think like maybe like, I feel like the people that do that, like they have some sort of like initiation, like they're in ties because I wouldn't even do that for my friends. Like, nah, no, nah, instantly. Once you figure out those details, I'm like, well, maybe we shouldn't be friends anymore. I'm, I'm good with associating myself with you because you are bringing me down and I'm already up here. And I can't go much lower, you know? That's just not what it is. JT, before we move on to a quick break and get to the most critically acclaimed segment in Morning Buzz history, Lana's segment, what do you think about this? Do you think that there's still a lot of work to be done in the world of Hollywood executives? I say this far too much on this program. I'm not surprised. I I say this far too much. And as much as I joke about it, it's not funny. Uh, I joke about a lot of things that aren't funny. I should stop that. But it's like, the point is, it's like, I just don't know how to go about these type of things anymore when they're constantly happening. We constantly see things like this. And then when, you know, it hits a fan and, you know, it's time for accountability to be taken. Everybody's standing in the background like a fly in the wall. Like, oh, I didn't know that happened. We had nothing to do with it. He doesn't represent our company in any way. But you covered for him. You lied. You hate him. You you pull at the stops. So, yeah, you just as guilty as him, my boy. So, like, whenever I read stories like this or, like, type them into scripts or just, you know, have to read them, I'm just like, it's not a surprise. It sucks. No. And we need to do better. But how many, how many times we go say we need to do better? Yeah, it's a never-ending story of, man, just be better, guys. We'll see what happens, though. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back... We'll hear from Lana what to watch, what to play, and I'm assuming we'll probably also hear from, again, Kate Bronstein and company. You want to listen to a conversation? Well, 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 look what we have here. Another morning buzz break. Another time we get to hear from Kate. I think this is this is highway robbery, everyone. I think this that's is been shameful. planned. This has been planned. She's got an inside. It's an inside job, guys. Her what show is it even on Thursday? It's not on Thursday. It's Friday. And is the only thing that plays on Thursday. That's we have a long crazy. list of shows that are on Thursday. And not a single promo for one of our shows on Thursday has ever aired on this program. Mm, mm, mm. What a disaster. Ugh. Such a disaster for the program. Not good. This is not good for the program. But I will say, everything else about today has been the greatest singular moment in Morning Buzz history. Is Amina's it? eating something now. I'm not sure what she's eating. She's always eating. <laughs> and I'm proud. Amina, before we get to Lana's uh, segment, we got to know, well, what's the snack for today? Um, so today... Mm. Is it a birthday cake? Uh, later. later. Okay. No, today I have my um strawberry nutri grain. Oh. Uh, well, all right. That's okay. That's yeah, fine. Be mediocre today. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. You can't. You can't always bring out the bangers. You know. You just you gotta can't get... always bring out the go go squeeze. Check back the Not the go go squeeze. Good lord. <laughs> Anyways, Alana, it is time for kicking it back with Alana. Lana, Lana, we're gonna redo that. I want the energy. I want the fire. I want the I want the smoke here oh, today. God. All right. You need, need the passion. I need the yes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, a segment like no other segment on the morning buzz. A segment that nobody on the history of the show could ever host ever again. A segment with her name in it. It is time for kicking it back with Lana. Ah. Lana's Maybe. shoulder has just been dislocated by Maybe. JT. Good lord. Anyways, Lana, let's jump right into things. Let me go first. Uh, sure. Let me just go back. Um, <laughs> the Independent came out yesterday and it's not currently rated on Peacock. JT, yeah? why? 
It's the name of the It's a great streaming platform, JT. <laughs> Shout out to NBC. No, I'm kidding. We're not associated with those frauds. I'm kidding again, guys. Everyone relax. It is, the, it is the final weeks of the most consequential American presidential election in history. Down between America's first female president or its first viable independent candidate. Mm-hmm. While history is being written, a young journalist and her idol team up to uncover a conspiracy that places the fate of the election and the country in their hands. Man, nothing like a movie about presidencies. Yeah. Wait, they're uh, referring to the- this movie. Not, not for nothing. This sounds terrible. Wait, are they referring to John Cena's in it? John Cena. John Cena. Is he the independent? Yeah, he is. Are you kidding me? Wait, so this isn't a documentary? No. Oh. This is my. This might be. The thing that puts Peacock under. This is the worst synopsis of a movie I think I've ever heard on this program. This sounds awful. Who asked for this movie? Who wants to watch this? Some people. Really? I guess. This this is a sick and twisted society. If this is what we're watching, I'm I'm ashamed. Who was the independent candidate? Because I don't remember. What are you talking about? I'm assuming this is referring to the no. It's not real. no. It's not real. It's made That's up. What I thought too. Ah. No, no, no. There's, there's no Hillary Clinton here. There's no uh, Joe Biden. There's no Donald Trump here. This is John Cena and company apparently. Uh, yep. Why is John Cena? Uh, I can't. Like we're not even going to be able to see who's on screen after the show. That's it's, what I'm saying. It's just like an invisible debate. It's just one person yelling at air. Anyway, you love saying that. I love that. Uh, whatever, Amina. Why don't you go <laughs> celebrate your birthday or something? All right. She is over there with her go go squeeze. Did you put a candle in go go squeeze? There's oh. no go go squeeze today. Yeah, there's no go go. We discussed this, JT. She's moved on. She's she's elevated from the go go squeeze. She's a Nutrigrain lad. All right. What if she did go go splat? Huh? <laughs> all right. Can you move on? Mom? We're <laughs> let's <laughs> listen to Selena Gomez, please. Too. Uh, so see. Selena Gomez, My Mind and Me, comes out tomorrow and is rated R on Apple TV. This documentary explores Selena Gomez's rise to fame and the dark place it ultimately pulls her into. Spanning six years, audience get to see her in her, quote, journey into a new light. Wow. Good for Selena. Um, I don't really, uh, you know, Selena Gomez is a person that does exist. Yeah. I can't say I dislike Selena Gomez, nor can I say I'm a big fan. Um, Wizard of Waverly Place wasn't a show for me. Everything. Um, it was all right. I I just wasn't a Disney person. Like I, well, I then you that's know. your fault. Oh, uh, I have right, whatever, Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> so much sass from Campbell. As soon as I said I'm not much of a Disney guy, he's like, you know what? If you're not a Disney guy, I quit. I'm not a fan of celebrity documentaries. Oh, really? Like none of them. I have Why? never been able to get into them. I don't know. I make a lot of documentaries doing films, but you do? I can't stand watching them. What documentary have you made? Mm, I don't even want to name them. They're just stupid. I don't like documentaries. I'm not a fan of them. I can't wow. sit through them. It's just like very Yikes. hard to sit or like, you know, it's one thing to actually be there. Making them is kind of funny. You get to like explore, but to actually sit down for two and a half mm. hours when you could be watching something entertaining and just watch somebody talk about their life and cry about the most dramatic parts of their life, it's kind of uncomfortable. Mm. And you're just sitting there like, wow, why am I watching the person like, you know, Selena Gomez? I know her for Wizards of Waverly Place. I know her for Tell Me Something I Don't Know. I know her for Love You Like Love Me Like a Love Song. I know her for that one weird movie about Spring Break that came out. Spring Breakers. Yeah. That was a movie, yeah. I, I know her for a couple of things. I don't want to sit there and watch the woman I grew up with that came out weird cry about the worst parts of her life for two and a half hours we're not going to talk about what i just raised was what the woman i grew up with wow wasn't she also in the hotel transylvania series she is i forgot about that yeah you can stop all right you know what amina I can't even be mean to you it's your birthday month amina you're a great human being go amina Mm. I mean, you didn't need her birthday to just say that, but I'm glad you know. And my name's JT, and I have to be that guy. Um, anyways, guys, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we have something very exciting—a sequel like no other. Yeah. Uh, so, Anolia Holmes Two comes out tomorrow, and it's rated PG-13 on Netflix. Starring Millie Bobby Brown, Anolia Holmes Two continues where the first left off, with Anolia now being a detective for hire, like her brother Sherlock. However, she quickly finds that being a female detective isn't as easy as she originally thought. 
until a little matchstick girl hires her to find her sister. Now, in the case, Anolia must enlist the help of her friends and brother to solve this mystery. Enola Holmes. I never heard of the first one. I'll remember it um, because there was a lot of uh, promotions for it. Yeah, there was a lot. And I saw Millie Bobby Brown. I didn't um, see a single one. When we were on the red carpet together. Ever. And it was a great time. Lovely time. What a lovely human. And, um, you know, it's just hard being famous like myself. And um, I'm happy for Millie because um, she's worked so hard. So, so hard. York, I'm Millie Rock. Oh uh, this is, hey, that wasn't too bad. All right. Okay. Okay. I did in my sock. You said what? In New York, I merely rock. Oh, man. I did in my sock. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, all right. <laughs> um, I will say I did not watch the first one. And yeah, so I'll be interested. I know a lot of people did enjoy the first one. And um, people are very into Millie Bobby Brown these days, uh, huge fans. And, uh, you know, good for her and good for the people of Netflix, I, I guess. I've seen a single thing she's in. Stranger Things? Not even Stranger Things. I never got into Stranger Things. She was also in um, something else, I'm sure. Uh, she was in other things. <laughs> she's done a lot of projects, guys. I'm you sure. You said that like you were about to list something. And yeah. You're just like, what? yeah. I haven't watched her. I literally had time. like, I imagined like a movie poster and I was like, oh, Godzilla. That's what it was. Yeah, God- yep. Godzilla. I knew it was in a movie. Yeah. She was in Godzilla? Yeah. yeah. She's oh, a kid. What the heck? Yeah, yeah. The Three daughter. Godzilla movies. She's the one that literally uh, fights Godzilla at one point with her bare hands and wins. She shoots a laser out of her eyes. That's all made up. But so probably she believe Godzilla, but King Kong couldn't. King Kong got smoked by Godzilla in those movies. That that, that was that that was just the writers being lazy. King that Kong. was embarrassing. King Not Kong, for nothing, King but Kong should should have demolished King Kong. Overgrown got right. washed. He looked like he was not prepared. Like he didn't watch any film on Godzilla. Um, and I feel like he just needs to adjust and see how to adjust next time. You know, what a, what a sad performance, guys. Anyways, let's talk about some video games, of course. So, Ghost Song comes out today for PS5, PS4, Xbox Series XS, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. On a lone moon called Lorian, what was once believed to be a dormant dead suit now comes to life. With no memory and a full arsenal of weapons, journey underneath the surface to find out what has been going on these past few years. What has been going on these past few years, Lana? Uh, you gotta find out. Ah, oh, man. Anyways, we got another one. We do have another one. The Chant also comes out today for PS5, Xbox Series, XS, and PC. A normal weekend quickly turns when a group chant opens the gloom, a psychedelic dimension of horror that feeds off negative energy. Play as a wide cast of characters as you fight off enemies, reason with the survivors, and find the true legacy of a cult from the 1970s. Ugh. A cult? From the 70s? Yeah. Disturbing. Mm-mm-mm. Anyways, um, shout out to cults out there. I'm in one. Uh, I've always loved... I'm kidding. <laughs> I mean, Cult of the Lamb is really popular right now. Yeah, yeah. Cults, is, cults are popping these days, everyone. Very um, good old cults. <laughs> Anyways, guys, Just that has been our one of the world's greatest morning show in the history There's of morning shows. Seconds. We still well, I, allow me to do an like an exit outro. All right, mm-hmm. I was in the middle. I was getting prepared. I was about to stand up. Then you cut me off. Good lord, this is not how you operate on this program. You know what's even worse? It's by not saying happy birthday again to Amina, guys. Hey, happy birthday, Amina! What a time! Happy birthday! What a time! <laughs> I mean, uh, you got any plans before we head to break? Yeah, I have plans every day. Every day? Wow. And we're part of your plans. What a time to be alive. Amazing. Wow. Guys, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we got our two of the greatest morning show in history.
And we're back for hour two of the morning buzz. And more importantly, it means the Kate takeover of this morning program continues as think- Kate and company are three for three on show mos and we will not stop hearing from kate and her show i which think no we should offense. just list kate as a cast member at this thursday. point featuring kate it's the morning buzz featuring kate kate thursday edition. as show mo it's just <laughs> ah man this is tragic guys this is oh man this is not good for the program this is um it's sad Poor it's very program. sad but you know it is good for oh. the program a living legend morning buzz icon been on thursdays it's been on Wednesdays. Amina's back for another set of shows, and she's a newscaster of like no other. And she's going to deliver the news report at 8.02 a.m. Good job. Thanks. Uh, Amina, please start <laughs> delivering the news. Okay. I was Amina! <laughs> okay. In national news, North Korea continues missile barrage with suspected intercontinental ballistic missile. The North fired three more missiles, one of which set off an alert in Japan, a day after launching a record of at least 23 missiles in a single day. The tests are seen as an effort by North Korean leader Kim Jong-un to develop his regime nuclear arsenal, pressure the U.S. to ease crippling sanctions, and gain international acceptance as a nuclear state. The South Korean military said that it had strengthened surveillance and monitoring in close cooperation with the U.S. and that it was maintaining military readiness for all situations. And in state news, questions remain regarding how a man accused of shooting two North police officers was able to evade authorities for nearly a day. Officials say that the officers were shot when they confronted 30-year-old Kendall Howard, who was wanted for another crime. Howard allegedly escaped into the apartment building, but by midnight, police determined Howard was no longer in the building, But 12 hours later, police swarmed the building again and came back out with Howard. It was not immediately clear if he had been inside the building the entire time or left and returned. And in local news, on November 8th, the Montclair voters will be asked to support a $187.7 million bond referendum to fund comprehensive infrastructure improvements throughout our school district. This plan includes improvements at every school as well as athletic and performing arts facilities and includes HVAC and electrical system upgrades, boiler and roof replacements, and other repairs necessary to meet health, safety, and building codes. And looking at the weather today, it is clear with a high of 68 and a low of 43 with a humidity level of 89% and moderate air quality quality with a level of 57. Amina? spectacular as always and i appreciate what you do for the program more importantly the weather isn't too cold out today yesterday as i almost missed my train back home from new york i thought you know what at least the weather's nice and that's what i had that that was my small dose of positivity as i was sprinting for my life um now the sports world is indeed as always never ending it's a 24 7 news cycle in sports and only one person campbell donovan can tell us what is going on? That's right, Isaiah. History into orbit. Four Astros pitchers combined to no hit the Philadelphia Phillies last night in game four. Houston joins Don Larson as pitchers to not allow a hit in the fall classic as Larson threw a perfect game in 1956. Game five in the city of brotherly love tonight with the series tied at two games apiece. The NBA the Knicks lose last night 112 to 99 to the Atlanta Hawks. Jalen Brunson had 20 for New York to, tomorrow night. Excuse me. The Nets are in the nation's capital, and the Knicks are going to be in Philly as well. Hockey action tonight. The Rangers are home to take on the Bruins. The Islanders are in St. Louis, and the Devils are in Edmonton to take on the Oilers. Thursday night football. The Eagles and the Texans do play each other tonight. A lot of Philly action this week as well. The NFL, more news there. Dan Snyder is in the process of selling the Washington Commanders. MSC Women's Soccer last night defeated Rutgers Camden in penalty kicks to advance to the NJAC Championship against Rowan on Saturday. Field hockey season came to a question loss to number three team in the country, also Rowan, 6-1 to one last night in Glassboro. And, of course, volleyball gets a rematch with, yes, the profs, in the NJAC semis tonight, as you know, MSU did fall to the Provs 
in five sets of last year in the NJF championship. Mm-hmm. A lot of action between those those two schools. And it's a, it's a good rivalry there. This has been your 8 a.m. Sportscast. I'm Campbell Dobbin, 90.3 WMSC, Upper Montclair. Campbell, that was incredible. I feel updated on the sports. I don't even need to open ESPN or Bleach Report when I have a you Campbell have Donovan. To. Absolutely. What's now, very, Bleach Report? It's another sports like app. Come on, Lana, aren't you a huge sports sports person? You, you love baseball and soccer and kickball. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Women's <laughs> gymnastics. I mean, you love them all. Racquetball's great. Racquetball's incredible. Yeah. Dodge all right. Ball. Very quickly. Oh. Campbell, let's make some Thursday night football predictions. Very quickly. In one word, who's winning? Eagles. There you go. That's not even just a prediction, guys. And it's I, a spoiler. Yeah, it, I mean, look, all the all the Philly uh, fans in around campus, you know, they're excited, but you know, the Phillies are undefeated. Aren't they gross? Aren't they just like the entirety of Philadelphia fans, sports team fans, just the absolute worst humans I, on the uh, earth? I, it's my opinion, not opinion of the station. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the Philly fan base. Mm-hmm. I'll leave it at you that. I'm not a fan of sports I, fan base. Um, well, my name's Chi Chi, and I only like musicals and music. Oh, mm-hmm. my name is Isaiah. And I like Chi Chi. And if anyone says one singular bad thing about a musical, I'm going to throw a fit. You just described every football, basketball, hockey, soccer. No, my bad. Football. Every football. Are you, you, oh. you going to tell Artie that? <laughs> You just it's it. a match week, everybody. No, uh, listen, more importantly, listen to any of the sports team on WMSC. You say you like a sports team they don't like, you will be shunned out of the studio. Mm-mm-mm. Sports team is doing sports things, guys. Um, don't know if we're allowed to say that anymore. Uh, Mal, let's go ahead and move on to everyone's favorite recurring segment. Am I, I in the lot. wrong? I thought that was a lot of segments. Hey, bro. Hey, 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 hey. Hey guys, hey, 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 hey. I can't be as good as I am. I misspoke. Well. I apologize. This is my already my second apology of the day. Um, let's go for three, everyone. What offensive thing can I say next? No, I'm kidding. Uh, let's go with an am I in the wrong? And it's titled Too Far? Question mark. Not Amina going through trying to fix it. Well, I appreciate Amina's work. Um, I get hey guys, Amina's birthday month. This this entire month. We're celebrating Amina's legacy here. Um uh, I gave birth. Wow, I, I really did. I gave birth, I gave birth to my son five months ago. Undoubtedly, I've gained a few pounds and my husband's been doing a good job of reminding me of it every other day. Good lord. Divorce him already, please. Um, my husband's 30th birthday took place last week at a restaurant. He took care of everything. Reservations, a menu, and even a cake. Uh, I arrived there with my in-laws and we found my husband. Understand the story. I, because I have an accent, you can't understand me. That's yep. pretty mean. Mm-hmm. Um, so, <laughs> so I arrived there with my in-laws and found my husband with his friends. We chatted when it was time for dinner, and I noticed the waitress put decent dishes in front of everyone else, but for me, put a salad-based dish, no meat or chicken, nor even rice or any of what the others had, just a mix of salads. I grabbed the plate and said to the waitress, Mm, excuse me? Thinking she got the wrong order for me. My husband got in the middle and said there was no mistake and that he ordered this dish specifically for me since I could use... Good Lord. Ooh, since I could use some salad right now. I felt awful. Absolutely terrible. I could not just sit there and take this after his mom nodded at me to eat it. I refused to let it go and started arguing with him in front of everybody. He looked right in the face and after I told him to eat the salad himself, then grabbed my things and walked out. As you should. I heard this mom shouting after me, telling me to go back and not make a big deal out of it. He came home and called me unhinged for making a scene, arguing and walking out after I ruined his birthday. He claimed he was being, quote, helpful. But I told him that I'm nursing and I'm... And a stinking salad wasn't going to fill up my stomach. He argued that I was in the wrong for my reaction and said that he and his mom were just looking out for my health. But I acted childishly instead of being appreciative. Am I in the wrong for walking out and not settling for the dish he picked and paid for? Now, the levels of narcissism. You know what? I'm going to throw to I'm going to throw to Lana first. Uh, Lana, what do you think about this? You think homie's in the wrong or what? No, he's not. Um, pregnancy takes a lot out of you. Your body is not the same for a very long time after you give birth. It is unfair of him to expect her to just lose weight 
automatically. She's already probably really self-conscious about it, and he's just making it worse. JT, you're next. What do you think? Again, the narcissism, just like, not only did he do that, then he had the nerve to get mad at her for being upset about it. And then the the gall of the mother. The gall. Listen, I have one of I have a very few things will set me off from like very fast. And one of which is outside people getting involved with things mm. that don't involve them, especially family. And I think the reason it ticks me off when family does it is because they come from a place where they feel like they have a right to. Specifically parents getting involved in a couple's squabbles. Yeah. I think like that will set me off more than anything. And before I know it, it's divorce because I'm gonna end up saying something. I'm Wait, but you know what? Like famous philosopher Vin Diesel once said is you Vin never Diesel. turn your back on family. Listen, you never turn your back on family, but sometimes family doesn't need to know everything. This is true. Uh, and this is the mess. way the mom was like, Yeah, co-signing his arrogance. I, I would have let's just say that salad would have ended up in places. Anyway, um, yeah, Campbell, what do you think? <laughs> In the wrong, but does this lady have the the right to just leave and make a scene? I mean, she has ever she has a right to be upset. If, you know, I mean, it was unexpected that she got that dish, mm-hmm. and you know, it uh, like Lana said, you know, they're not the same after you know having a child, and you know, probably she could have asked maybe nicely or or whatnot, but uh the husband kind of overreacting as well to her freak out i guess is kind of mm. off kiltered but uh it's, it, i think both are like you think it, both are in the wrong both i mean that's a both, hot take campbell not gonna lie that that might be a steaming hot take today i, I think both are in the wrong for the for the reaction all right amina Shadow Realm, Amina. Birthday, Amina. Oh, she gonna read him like a book. I saw that look on her face while you was reading. I can't uh, wait to hear this. Let's hear, Amina. Let's hear it. So, I just think he just has the audacity Ooh. to mm. tell her that she could use some salad right now. <laughs> when it's like, and let alone at the birthday dinner. Like, I feel like that's like Ugh. something like Everybody else is probably feasting on these magnificent meals, and you give me the the starter, the side, just the salad. A garden salad, none of us, it seems like. And I feel like now. Okay. Ooh, I think shit. calm down for a second. <laughs> so I kind of agree with Campbell just because I feel like in that moment, I'm not gonna like burst out and cause a scene but when we leave Mm. he's gonna get it yeah and then also i'm telling the waitress to take that plate back because i don't want it i don't want the salad that's not what i asked for but it's just very it just really blows my mind when other people like to speak on other people like you really just said that to her and then it's like she literally just gave birth so it's like it's not like oh also, not for nothing, but this man better look like Dwayne The Rock Johnson. He like, my thing is this. He definitely doesn't. He's probably having a receding hairline. He's probably a, a little bit on the bigger side, too. And he's probably thinking to himself, well, I need to have the most in-shape woman ever. She's he not allowed def- to eat anything. He, She's only allowed to have strawberries. That's it. He but definitely what? looks like Hillbilly Jack Black. Yes. The nerve to be I, that's what I imagine. This guy is trash. And you, sir, I, I hope she divorces you. I hope she takes the kid. And I hope that you pay a lot of bills and child support, all right? Because you seem just like an annoying human being. You had the audacity to really be like, everyone else, you're going to have a nice steak, a nice piece of chicken, a nice pork chop. And then you just... That's your wife, man. If I, if that was my wife, I want to treat my wife good. I, I want to give my wife the greatest meal on earth. I it's a celebration of I a don't birthday. Fault her for, I don't fault her for going off. As a matter of fact, if I was there at the dinner, not the wife, I would have looked at her and said, you going to take that? Yeah. I won't. <laughs> I'd be like, um, hmm. But I, I also have another thing. What it, like, if she got the salad, but, like, she, like, found, like, an ultimatum where, you no, know, she asked the waitress, you know, for, for like another dish if she could have asked like respectfully yeah i'm sure there could have been other alternatives oh than she to, could have um, done that but it was more the principle yeah like, it was more like it was like oh you just like, did are that? you kidding me yeah i mean not for nothing i do kind of understand the process like i'm gonna try to put my body into a 
lady that just gave birth five months ago, which I I don't think that is should the right hard. perspective no. for should me. That, should it be that hard for you, Isaiah? Yeah. Oh man. Um, I suddenly have to go get milk, guys. Um, so. <laughs> I think that I probably would have saved it for after the dinner and then really made like, like really told homie off and be like, not only are you like disrespectful, I don't even like, why would you do that to me? It's embarrassing. It's rude. You made me look like this, this, this. You don't even get to sleep with me today. All right. You're going on the couch for the next six months. All right. And you're on baby duty. You're taking care of the kid. I'm going to a spa day. All right. I'm going to treat myself because you couldn't treat me good yourself. All right. Mm-mm. it's also the mom though too that part yeah. made me oh, matter that's than you. Anything. that was also upsetting because the mom's got like pent up aggression against this lady for some reason you would also think she would understand like what apparently not Wait, what were you saying Marina? but i feel like that's where the husband gets it from because mm-hmm. she saw no fault in what he said she agreed with him she said yeah get her the salad so it's like clearly that mindset was the old the old uh you know taught as one of your parents taught you when you were a kid i also Mm -hmm. just like again just one of the things that like huge pet peeve of mine again i said it before people getting involved and especially family and like this is coming from like on, growing man. up aunts and uncles thinking they had a right to talk about what was going into my house. That's fine. So like even imagining like being in a relationship and then like I'm sorry, but if me and my girl are like having like a dispute, is she gonna say, Well, I told my mom about it and my mom agrees with me? <laughs> Things I'm gonna end okay. up saying like I'm gonna just be like, Well, you and your mom can well, you know, fill in the blanks. But like <laughs> then like that'll be the next thing that comes out of my mouth at that point. Cause now you're just like, oh, so you think because your mom co-signs and disrespect and just makes it okay. Like, no, both of y'all can get it now. And I feel like that's what it would be like in that moment right there. Like, his mom's like, yeah, eat the salad. Like, mm. <laughs> like no, absolutely not. So, uh, everyone, I think we're all in agreement here. Is um, She's not in the wrong, but um, could she have done things a little differently? Maybe. But I think in general, it seems like the other two are the worst of the three. Yeah. Yeah, yeah everyone on page with that one? Mm-hmm. All right. That's pretty much what Reddit said, too. Um, Now, Guys, we're going to take a quick break. I will say we will not be playing another Christmas song. Thank you. I know. I know, Lana. It's going to be saved for probably the week after Thanksgiving. Non-stop Christmas music. That's actually going to be the whole show. We're not going to talk about any news. Just Christmas music. And actually, we're going to put Chris Brown's This Christmas on repeat specifically for you. Nonstop. Okay. You know, it's going to be the drill version of the song, the Christmas version, the Hanukkah version, every version possible. It's going to be that. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we'll be back here on the morning bus. What a program. <laughs>
back. Back and better than ever. The show is the morning buzz. The day is indeed Thursday, November 3rd. And the vibes here are incredible. This is the singular greatest morning buzz in morning buzz history. And what a time to be alive. Better than Monday. Well, that's, you know, honestly. To be fair. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's what I'm saying. All the greatest singular day of the week is you a know, Thursday. Morning buzz should just be Thursday. Honestly, I signed a petition for it, um, <laughs> but according to FCC guidelines, it's just not acceptable. Oh. They said too much diversity. No, I'm kidding. Uh, all right, um, guys, yeah. let's go in. It's the program. <laughs> yeah, they got a lot of. They got a lot of. They said, you know, program. we need, we need we need a couple of the, the Caucasians to nope. fill the void. There, there, there's too much of the other ones. We need to we need to create the balance. You guys understand, right? Exactly. Exactly. They're they're doing the whole Thanos thing. Um. All right, guys. Uh, let's talk about some entertainment stories. JT, hmm. we have a thing presented by a weird app. Oh yeah, the TikTokers. You know our general manager Annabelle. She loves TikTok. And Huge fan. Know, this one has an account herself. Does the, the dances? The um, the renegade friends with Charlie and Dixie D'Amelio. Ooh, this is for mm. you, Annabella. In this week's cover story for Variety, filmmakers Joe and Anthony Russo are clear that their dedication to their own independent studio, AGBO, means the directors of Endgame don't expect to make another movie with Marvel Studios anytime soon. Mm. Joe Russo says we won't be ready to do anything with Marvel until the end of the decade. That's very sad. Can I ask you a question, JT? Yeah. What on earth? is going on here uh, we gonna find out because apparently they don't want anything to do with marvel what I, I, I know joe russo says we have an amazing relationship with them that we've built over the decade i think we have a point of view on how they can stretch the limits of their ip moving forward rather than playing ip management in other words they don't like them as much right now um the original Hercules, directed by the Little Mermaid filmmakers John Musker and Ron Clements, reimagines the Greek legend of the Greek demigod as a story rising celebrity who becomes famous due to his acts of heroism, as is the case for all Disney's animated films back in the 1990s. It's also a musical largely sung by a quintet of Black women serving as a Greek chorus. Along with Hercules, AGBO is collaborating with some of the biggest streaming platforms in the industry. For, for Netflix, they are developing a sequel and a prequel to The Grey Band and directing a sci-fi adventure of The Electric State with Millie Bobby Brown and Chris Pratt. And for Amazon Vime Video, they're producing the wildly ambitious pro- crime spy thriller, Jesus, Citadel, with Priyanka Chopper Jonas and Richard Madden and a reboot of Butch and Sundance as an event series to Amazon with Reggie John Page Glenn Powell attached with other titular outlaws. It just seems like they're everywhere at this point. Mm-hmm. I think reading this, I was very confused because, like, you know, Joe Russo and um company, they were like, you know, we're just leaving Marvel. We're going to our own thing. I'm like, okay. And they're going from everything to Hercules to the Little Mermaid. You know what's the interesting part, though, is that their the live-action Hercules is going to be inspired by TikToks. I think that was kind of the key quote within the story there, JT. And I yeah. find that to be very interesting Interesting that How did I miss those that? two would be using that as the inspiration for Hercules, the live action movie, which also Hercules in live action should probably be an absolute disaster, I imagine, because I can't imagine anything inspired by TikTok would make a good movie. Oh. Um, no offense to TikTok. I do be scrolling from time to time and get that fix as I'm on the train or as I'm walking around. But a whole movie inspired by tiktok i mean that seems like a disaster waiting to happen absolute disaster i mean oh what a shame amina are you are you on the tiktok are you a tiktoker i am okay amina followed me the other day you're a moderate okay wait actually amina are you a poster or are you a viewer um a viewer i make tiktoks but i don't post them what does that mean you just make exactly it for what your. I just said. No, so you you make them. Yeah. And you just never post them. Yeah. They're it's just for, in your drafts. It's for like my memories. Yeah. The oh. only TikToks of me that get posted are the ones that like my friends make. Interesting. So how many drafts do you have? Like a hundred and six. Not that many. Oh, okay. Not that committed to that. She's only like ninety nine. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Lower. yeah. 
Mm. 86. Yeah, that seems about right. Amina, though, for a whole once one thing is they're obviously they're continuing to uh, capitalize on the whole remaking everything that's under the sea. Mm-hmm. Um, so Hercules is up next and it's now it's their time to shine. And what, what do you think about TikTok being an inspiration and kind of how they continue to make that film? I think that's weird looking to TikTok for inspiration. I think a live action Hercules, I think that would be good. But then it's like, what are you drawing? What inspiration are you drawing from TikTok? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm confused on that part. Like, is it going to be dancing from TikTok? Uh, or... This is probably up JT's alley. He loves musicals and dancing. Or like, are they going to use, like, have people been making Hercules TikToks where like they make their own songs or dances for it? Yeah. That's the part I'm kind of just like that. I don't get it. We already know what Hercules is about. This is true. And from there. They are, this is, I, I'm very confused. I'm kind of scared to see what comes out of this, but. Yeah, I'm not a fan. But very quickly, before I go on to our next story, Lana is our resident film major, uh, has done many of films, critically acclaimed in her film department. Um, people are saying Lana is the greatest director in the history of directing in Montclair State history. So that's a, no, um, Lana. What do you think about the concept? Because obviously you're entering the film world at some point and you've already done a couple things. So what do you think of the concept of a movie being based on and inspired by TikTok? Um, I mean, personally, I'm not huge on it. I'm not really a big fan of TikTok. I have it. Um, I, I'm a, more of a viewer. Mm-hmm. Um, I really only post for um, VPC because it's kind of my job. Um, but no just i guess that's kind of where the medium is going and like if you could take inspiration from anywhere you can get inspiration from anywhere really but i tiktok no yeah i I think that movie's gonna be a disaster and speaking of potential disasters it's time it's the most wonderful time of the year which means we're getting a sequel to a christmas classic everybody almost 40 years after the original release HBO Max has dropped the official trailer of A Christmas Story Christmas, which is a sequel to the holiday classic that airs for 24 hours straight on Christmas Day. In the movie, we will see the return of original star Peter Billingsley as Ralphie Parker. Uh, No accent in the movie. uh, Along with other cast members from the original movie. Now, 51-year-old Ralphie is attempting to reconnect with his inner child and reconcile with the death of his father by returning to the famous Cleveland Street with his brand new family that he bought online. Just kidding. Uh, That is not part of the movie. Ralphie, hey guys, we're going to go past that. Ralphie and friends (laughs) attempt to bring the magic of Christmas this time for their families the upcoming release is set in the 70s given that the 1983 film was set in the 40s now clay caddis the christmas chronicles director is now directing and uh is the executive producer is nick schneck the film is being produced obviously through warner brothers and a bunch of other people and a christmas story christmas will separate from a a previous christmas story sequel which might be one of the worst movies i've ever not finished like i saw 10 minutes and i was like you know what i think this is should be burned uh such as the 1994 it runs in your family or i didn't know there was a tv show um there's also a musical which i'm sure jt thought was amazing but most people thought it was terrible i never heard of that good that shouldn't exist either that was also terrible Okay, very quickly, though, as we get into the season that is the holiday season, um, Christmas movies are going to be airing on pretty much every channel. So I'm curious to know, what are some of your guys' favorite holiday movies? And before we get into that, what do we think of A Christmas Story? Are we fans of that one? I like it. It's a good movie. All right. JT, you like it? Yeah. Campbell, you like it? It's uh, on at my relative's house for Christmas Eve, so I, I enjoy watching So you Christmas enjoy story. it? Okay. Amina, you you a fan of A Christmas Story? I am. Okay. All right. I enjoy it too. I got to say, I think it's one of my favorite Christmas movies. Uh, I just think it's a classic, you know, shout out to them. Now, very quickly, favorite holiday movies. We'll start with Lana, our film expert. I don't even like, oh, uh, you actually probably don't have one. Nightmare on Christmas, Nightmare Before Christmas, I'm guessing. You know. That seems, that seems like a Lana answer. That's I, not, I, I don't consider that a Christmas movie. I don't either. That That's like it's more of a Halloween both, movie. It's yeah. both. It can be, it's man. That it just can't. Can. Like, I'll let it slide for Lana because I don't think she has any other options. Um, So I'll let it, strictly for Lana only, that is a Christmas movie. Uh, JT, what do you, you got one? I gotta go on my top three. 
coming in three is um the Santa Claus was Tim Allen. Coming in two is Home Alone, and coming in one is Krampus. The new Krampus movie? Yeah. That is seriously your favorite Christmas holiday movie? <laughs> if you know me, you can think that's of not I, like I get it, you're a horror film guy. What on how did that end up on anyone's top three? I think I watched it for the first time in eighth grade and I loved it. That movie's a mess. That movie is a whole it's hour and a half of pure mess. It's it's just chaotic. It's the 2015 one we're referring to. Yeah, it's, the one where the daughter just like walks out of the house in the middle of a winter storm and they're like, Well, teenagers will be teenagers. It's just chaotic beauty. No, you cannot say beauty on that one, man. I have to. Oh, I have to. I've rewatched that film so many times. I was this close to buying an animatronic of Krampus to sit outside of my house. You honestly, that'd be a lot better than that Chucky doll that's inside the office right now. That thing's disturbing. Ugh. (laughs) Anyways, Campbell, what's your favorite holiday movie? Uh, my my number, my top three. My number three is National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Mm, Okay. Number two is Jingle All the Way. And number one is Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. Okay. No, I don't, you know, I don't have beef with anyone's answers, probably except for Lana's, but I mean, it is what it is. Uh, Amina. Nightmare Before Christmas comes as four, by the way. So that's, that doesn't count for you. That doesn't count. It's only for Lana. Uh, the rules are the rules. Amina, favorite holiday movie? Uh, mine's similar to Campbell's. But I like Home Alone, National Lampoon, and I know everybody doesn't like it, but I like the Polar Express. Mm. I, I like. I mean, cute. I mean, it's certainly a cartoon. Like it's definitely a cartoon. I know that for sure. Um, and that's all I got. I've never seen it. I saw it, and uh, I gotta say, it was just like it didn't. It didn't like some Christmas movies make you feel good inside. I felt a little uncomfortable by the Polar Express. Why? I don't know. I just don't know how to describe it. Just as I was watching, I was like, "Why does this make me feel weird?" The animation is a little odd. That's maybe that's what, like yeah, the animation's yeah, yeah. kind of like hard to look at to me. That's what I would say. I just like the songs. Um, I said, do you want an actual Christmas movie out of me? You actually have one? Yeah. Wow. Go ahead. I like the Peanuts Christmas movie. Are you uh, 60 <laughs> plus? <laughs> A Christmas? Annabella yeah. says she can't believe nobody named Elf. Elf comes in number five. I have a time. Uh, um, you know what? Elf. I, I might have to switch. Yeah. I okay. might have to switch now because I forgot about Elf. Mm. Mike was in my apartment last night and I was watching the Boondocks. I left to pick up my friend and I came back and he switched it from the Boondocks to Elf. And I That's and hilarious. He was like, I might change it. I'm like, okay, just don't put on no nonsense. And I fully expected to come walking into anime or some idiocracy. But no, it was it was it was elf. And I was like, you know what? That's not okay. too bad. I think that. my top three, I think Christmas Story for me will be number one. Um, I really do like Home Alone, so maybe I'll put that at number two. And maybe even Home Alone 2 at number three. I think the Home Alones are like the quintessential holiday movies. Like there's nothing. I mean, there's a lot of loopholes, I feel like, in that movie. I, they probably could have died, the intruders, at many of times. And that little child is definitely a psychotic human being. Um, but that is a discussion for another day. I think it's funny. There's this um, video online that, like, someone teamed up with a doctor to analyze the movie, at which point someone either, like, broke a bone or probably should have died. Uh, and apparently, like, they should have died, like, 37 times within that movie. So um, there you go. That's an update on that one. But I would say that's a top three. And I think Elf would probably be four or five. I really do like Elf. Um, I think it's a classic, and yeah. See, I have a controversial. <laughs> I hate Elf. I, I don't like it. I think a lot of people have come out to say that Elf is, um, yeah. I I just Buddy annoys me. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean Buddy's kind of an idiot. <laughs> if we buddy. could say it. Yeah. In the most lovable way possible, your Buddy. How am I Buddy? You won't lock your doors, Lana. <laughs> that honestly, that is the only way I can compare you to Buddy is the that you refuse to lock your doors I'm and i hope bad. i hope you lock that that should not be an actual statement you should just be better not getting better Lana. lock it please <laughs> look okay i i locked the bathroom door oh wow congrats <laughs> how do you remember the bathroom door but not the actual door to your phone oh my mom gets really mad at me. as she should um anyways uh we got a story about adele very quickly jt Hello. apparently i've been saying it wrong you've been saying it wrong we've been all been saying it wrong excuse me yeah what go ahead say ain't no way yeah uh, who in jesus's name pronounces this woman's name like 
Adele. Adele, Adale. It's like, hey, bro, I, just read the story. <laughs> the Grammy Award winning artist 34 set the record straight about her name in a recent QA with fans in Los Angeles to promote the release of her I Drink Wine music video. Love that, Adele said after a fan via satellite from London asked her a question about songwriting. She said my name perfectly. The correct pronunciation is Adele, not Adele. I hate this trend. Turn me down, Isaiah, because I'm going to go nuts. Okay. I hate this trend of singers going years and years and years and years and years going by a name, never saying anything about it. And then one day they happen to stumble upon an interview and just like, oh, yeah, by the way, y'all have been pronouncing my name wrong forever. Ariana Grande did it. Actually, that's just, that's just the only example I can think of. But this before. You, you know what? I got to be honest. And... At first, I was on your side, but then I remembered who I am. Secondly, I also <laughs> remembered a video from Hassan uh, Minhaj. He's like a comedian. And he was saying that for all of his career, he was saying his name in like a very like American way, like in the English way, Hassan Minhaj. And then one time he was like on the Ellen show. And it's like his mom had this look is like, that's not like your name pretty much. So I feel like maybe that was like her moment to be like, someone finally said it correct. Let me just set set it straight you know i guess but it's like i have no beef with adele saying what her name see, is see like i oh i am always in 100 percent support of correcting people however yeah. if it's gone like decades and then out of nowhere one day it's not even like a critical yeah i feel like it's about time it's just like a, oh yeah by the way that's not my name now when like, i get famous that's gonna happen i'm like, gonna i'm gonna keep growing like call me whatever you want but once i make it big time like Jimmy Kimmel, uh, he's like asking me. I'm like, listen, Jimmy, that's not my name. And then, but then it's like, how do you expect? It's like, like apparently, Aaron Grande is Grandi. Apparently, no, it's not it is. Grande. Yeah, yeah. There, there's an interview where she's like, yeah, my name is Grandi, and I'm like, where was this? I mean, as our resident Ariana Grande fan, um, is this true? Yeah. Really? So it's yeah. Ari? Is it Ariana or Ariana? Well, I always said Ariana. Yeah, it is Ariana. But okay. It's but like, the last name that's Ariana Grande. But she said, because like it's Italian, but she's the one who like was just saying Grande. Okay, that's interesting. Huh. But she doesn't expect everybody to sit here and call her that. Yeah. Also, I don't think that's what Adele was saying either. I, I think that was just like a by the way kind of thing. I, I doubt she would care. Maybe who knows? Actually, maybe Adele hates it. Sorry, Adele, Adele. Are you ranking? That's just, Adele. That sounds so yes. off. It sounds wrong, yeah, right? Iron Man two is off. Off the no, Adele. Iron Man two is on. Uh, yes. mm -mm. Anyways, we have two people on our show that are clearly not interested in this story. I right am. Now. Li how did wow. I just talk about Adele? Absolutely shameful. How did I just Shame. talk about Adele? If Shame I'm on you two. Now, <laughs> let's talk about some more stories. JT, huh? very quickly before yes. we take a break. Mm -hmm. Why don't we talk about apparently blackface in 2022? Oh, yeah. Once again, not surprised. A little throwback to what could have been hour one. But oh, very quickly. This is 100 percent the L of the day. <laughs> oh, yeah. 100 percent. Um, I talked about this on my show yesterday. I didn't crisis. Please listen at 12 if you want. Um, Cedar Police, Cedar City Police are uh, working to identify three teens who were involved in a verbal confrontation at a Walmart on Halloween wearing blackface and black and white striped prisoner costumes. A video of the confrontation, which initially appeared on TikTok and since went viral on a variety of social media platforms, has triggered widespread outrage and condemnation. The footage depicts three teens wearing blackface along with a young woman outfits in a police cut police costume all of whom were scolded for being racist by the person filming who was off camera wearing blackface if you don't know is racist and dehumanizing this is the practice of using makeup to imitate the appearance of a black person dates back to the 1800s the early 17th century when minstrel show performers began darkening their faces to create bigoted caricatures of black people the uh, police department sergeant justin ludlow said that even if the user are identified it's not clear that they will be arrested or charged with the crime in the video the person filming can hear, be heard saying you guys are never going to get into college you guys are never going to get any scholarships because this is a hate crime. The teens then could be seen smirking and laughing as they seem to dismiss the person's comments. One of them saying, quote, we all dropped out of high school. It's okay. 
That doesn't make it okay. Oh, man. Oh, man. I don't know if you guys saw the video. Yeah. But um, I saw it. that was one of the most disturbing videos I've seen in quite some time. And I've seen a lot of crazy things on the internet. But the fact that you had a whole group of Utah teenagers pretty much all in agreement that this was an okay plan at a Walmart to do was very... It makes you concerned about what the youth is doing these days. Wow, I sound like a 45-year-old man right now. Once again, but, um, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised considering the state, but it's just disappointing to see that we are in 2022, and it seems like some areas of our country have still not evolved as human beings as they continue to do idiotic things like this and hurtful things like this because it's just unacceptable. It really is upsetting. I, I haven't seen this video exactly, but I saw a post um that was kind of like this where somebody actually dressed up as hitler for halloween oh, man. i saw that video and i almost like cute so yeah it's it's awful that this is still happening in 2022 i just don't understand why people just don't use their minds a little bit from time to time i think that's an okay thing to do um because listen, sometimes I, I do some crazy things i say a lot of interesting things on this show or in life but um I remember that um, there's certain things that you can't do or say, and that these are certainly some of those things. And this is a very disturbing time. I just, I just don't understand. Like you know, like of course I would blame. I, I obviously blame blame these teenagers, but like also blame like you know their their parental supervision that and their parents for for allowing them to do this or or one not. So, but like. I think it's so idiotic that this stuff happens and, you know, these, these, these kids, you know, they, they think it's funny. It's not, it's, it's, it's idiotic. And, you know, like Lana said with that video with the guy dressed up as literally a uh, uh, German soldier from World War II, literally a Nazi soldier, and no one did anything. Literally, they all just looked at the guy and, I mean, honestly, like if if I was in that in that bar, I would have really said something. Yeah, I mean, this is uh this Halloween season. I, I saw a lot of weird costumes, like babies dressed up as well, Jeffrey Dahmer. Well, yeah, and someone that, was that like pretending funny. to be the attacker for um, Nancy Pelosi's husband, and that I... person actually happens to be running for super intendant somewhere, I believe, in New Jersey. Oh, um, oh gosh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. So. Yeah, yeah, that guy. Uh. So I mean. I it's somebody, a mess, man. I, people I are not somebody, using their brains. I saw somebody give their baby a BBL costume. I saw, I saw that. that too. That is, listen, I, sometimes yeah, you got to question society as they do. Society, society is, is, I'm, I'm gonna let you in a little secret. Um, there are some costumes that are manufactured by spirit that are so who approved this that the stores themselves refuse to put them out on the floor as they should. Someone was able to use I, their brain. I saw a whole box in the stock room and it was marked in all bold on every corner of the box do not put on the floor it was closed but me being curious and nosy i was like now what is in this box so i opened it well you know the um for lack of a better term suggestive police officer costumes for you know adult yeah. women well it was one of those but for children on that note, what? spirit. Uh, once again, I've never trusted a spirit Halloween, and that just confirms my thoughts. On I spirit opened Halloween. it, and I was like, "There is no way." That's. I think at that point we gotta take a break because that's that's wrong on so many levels. Good lord! Oh wow! Um, <laughs> hey guys, we're gonna come back, and I hopefully this program continues to operate at an all time high because, okay. wow. Anyways, should I get it? Should I wait? Is it safe? What? It's okay to have questions. Oh, God. Now? What?
And we are back, guys. And it is indeed the singular greatest episode of the Morning Buzz and the history of Morning Buzz. As once again, we are celebrating the month of Amina because Amina's birthday is indeed in November. <laughs> shout out to Amina. Uh, and shout out to everyone else that is born in the month of November. But more importantly, what we're focused on Amina. Now, Amina, you're turning 22. You already turned 2022. 2022? Oh, good. I think I just had a stroke. Uh, I can't. <laughs> Oh, uh, anyway, so you know what? Forget it. I mean, uh, we're, we're gonna all celebrating having you today. That's the the gist of what I was trying to say. Good lord, we're I, all having storks today. Yeah, I I don't feel good, guys. I I see the light. <laughs> um, all right, so <laughs> let's get into <laughs> next story of the day. I hope I can read this next one. Jeez. Um, all right. In what in the world is going on? News: Furniture giant IKEA has sent a solo indie developer a cease and desist letter. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Ooh. So the Swedish meatball making store demanded he make changes to his unreleased survival horror game set in an IKEA like furniture store. A lawyer is representing IKEA are claiming that the game commits trademark infringement because some of the press outlets have drawn comparisons between their official brand and the game. The Swedish firm have given developer Jacob Shaw 10 days to change the game and remove all IKEA products associated with the famous IKEA store. Um, so, yeah, uh, the store is closed is an unreleased co-op survival game that is in the final week of a, of a successful Kickstarter campaign that raised a lot of money, guys, almost $50,000. The game describes itself as being set in an infinite furniture store. How, who is funding that? Um, IKEA lawyers listed the infringing aspects of Shaw's game. Quotes. Your game uses a blue and yellow sign with Scandinavian name on the store. A blue box-like building. Yellow <laughs> vertical stripe identical to those worn by IKEA personnel. A gray path on the floor. Furniture that looks like IKEA furniture. And product signage that looks like IKEA signage. All forging immediately suggests that the game takes place in an IKEA store. Given that IKEA makes a casual $25.4 billion last year, Jacob has no choice to comply and make changes to his indie game. Man. Well, he messed up. Hmm? Are, are you on the side of Ikea right now? Well, I mean, if it's... Tough. Are you going to defend the Swedish meatball freaks? <laughs> I've only been to that uh, store once. Did you like it? No? I do not like furniture stores. Unless, you oh. know, I am... Uh, tempted to just plop on a pill on a on a couch or or a bed. So you don't like home decor, is what you're saying? No, no, not a big. <laughs> the strategy is no, no, please, no. Not I hate pain. it. But if it's copyright infringement, then and what you just read sounds like it's uh, I IKEA esque. Yeah, you know. This guy's in uh, trouble. I mean, yeah, I mean, he's going to have to comply. It is what it is. But um, is it a little bit petty from Ikea? I think so. It's petty. It's very petty. I mean, I it's mean, an indie game. You make a ton it's of so money. Like yeah. Sponsor, it's like, if they wanted. I feel, right? Uh, this is uh, this is not a hot, this is a hot take, but it's really a realistic one. Ikea is very overrated. Really? Because... Our fearless leader, Annabella, would say otherwise. Big fan of Ikea. She so um, uh, with that being said, Campbell, we're going to have to let you go. Uh, it's been a great ride. <laughs> Bye, Campbell. I still, no, got, I've I still actually, got eight minutes. Yeah, right? I've never been to an Ikea. One day I'll go. But um, My I do like a furniture store from time to time. And I think uh, the concept of a horror game in a furniture store is definitely unique, I imagine. And uh, I like that. Yeah, I kind of like the idea. And I wish, um, the last I wish time, Ikea wasn't too petty. The last time I was in an Ikea, it was last 96? year. 96? Yeah. No, no, yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah. yeah but it was uh, last were, year. Yeah. We were celebrating our co-producer Laura's birthday. And we um uh Kenny sent me and Cam a um giant shark and said, This is what Laura wants for her birthday. And the only place we could find said shark was in an IKEA. An IKEA? Yeah. A yeah whole in the shark? kids section. Yeah, there was like a like giant, like almost life size shark. Weird. And Kenny sent it to us. It was like, it's in IKEA. And me and Cam were like, Okay, let's go to IKEA. And I I don't think I've ever been in an IKEA before then because I was not expecting that store to look mm. like that. And I walked in and I was like, what is this? Mm. Did you get it's anything? Fun. Is huh? this fun? You know what, guys? I think we need to have a representative from IKEA herself. Uh, <laughs> why, why, why do you like IKEA so much, Miss Annabella? I love the simplistic uh, furniture. It's kind of like very chic and affordable right so um i know that 
like it's not a popular thought, but it's just like clean lines and not gaudy stuff, affordable. Again, um, you can get like a whole kitchen set for like way less than you will get in one cabinet at a cabinet store. So uh, the other thing is, if you are a brand new kid like me in New York City, paying for everything on your own, um, I could go and get stuff like to stock my kitchen plates and, and stuff like that for a little bit less than you would if you go to like, I don't know, say William Sonoma. So it's the yeah. Sam's Club of Furniture. Right. No, and, and also it's fun. Like you get lost. It's kind of like a labyrinth. Unless you know what you're doing, the, there should be an Ikea movie like Tom Hanks where you're stuck in the Ikea. <laughs> you know what I mean? A horror movie version. Possibly, yeah. but also like everything you need is there, except that the kitchens do not really work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, also, if you go there as often and you uh, are a friend of IKEA, whatever they call their uh, loyalty program, program, yeah. uh, <laughs> it's you get like why are you some aiding and abetting? It's like coffee and stuff, and it's like not bad. And the meatballs, by the way. They're delicious. So sorry, like, um, and that guy. Yeah, Campbell, take that. Yeah, Campbell. Yeah. What, what, are you, what are you into? Don't tell me that you're in some sort of gaudy, like, Real Housewives of New Jersey kind of furniture store. My God. Wow. No, no Campbell apparently hates furniture. Absolutely <laughs> hates it all. You know, guys, I think at some point, morning buzz trip to Ikea as, as we stock someone's random apartment. What a great idea, guys. Let's do it. That, that sounds like a fun time. Mm -hmm. You know what's also fun? What? Apparently, Harry Potter guys. JT, yeah. we have our next story. It's like you knew. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Harry Potter fans, right? Do, 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 you do, have do, to scroll fast. You know, it's good lord. Thimmer, we have two stories of... down. Just scroll. I. It should be the next story. You're a slacker. The National You're Trust. Slacker. The, anyway, mm -mm -mm. anyway, <laughs> the National Trust Simra will allow a shrine to Dobby the House of Dobby. Dobby. I. <laughs> To remain on a Welsh feast after the possibility after removing it became a viable option. Whoever came up with that option is a joke. The National Trust Simru said the popularity of the beach with tourists was putting pressure on the area that this is part of the protected area. It is also home to large gray seals, harbor porpoise, and some of the largest population of seabirds in the world. Fans created a memorial to the beloved character at Freshwater West Beach, which is part of the protected conservation area where scenes in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1 and Part 2 were filmed. W is killed towards the end of the first installment. Oh, spoiler. And it's buried oh, upon a dune yeah. looking the most beast. I know. <laughs> the beginning of the second film features a um, scene showing the elf's grave marked with a tombstone that reads, Here lies Dobby, a free elf. Since the final film's release in 2011, fans have trekked to the beach to lay tributes to the fictional character. Many leave pebbles with a message such as R.I.P. Dobby, we love you Dobby, written on them. Fans have also left thousands of socks in honor. <laughs> I, I knew it was socks. In uh, uh, honor of the iconic house elf. The socks are a reference to Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets in which Harry tricks the Dobby Zen master, Lucius Malfoy, into uh, handing the house elf a sock. Which then frees him from servitude. Oh, wow. It just sucks that the writer is not as good of a person as her stories. Yeah. Oh, man. If only it really does suck. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm going to show myself out, guys. <laughs> that's a good one. I, I, that, that's you know, one. as much as I want to, I can't hate. You can't like, on it. It's 100%. Good. So it's I'm going to hate 75%. Uh, well, I think it's really cool. I will say, as much as my hatred for Harry Potter has shined through many years of this program, you hate I think, everything. I think this is cool. I think this is awesome. And I'm glad that they kept the shrine up for Dobby because I enjoy the character of Dobby. What a good guy. Always looking out for Harry. Do you relate to hmm? his friends? <laughs> what? Do you relate to Dobby is what you ask me? Do you? Anyway, what were we talking about? Annabelle, <laughs> as our resident Harry Potter expert, you've met Radcliffe many of times. Wait, 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 what wait, wait. What? This? Do you not know? No. She oh, come on. Sing secret. I didn't know she met Harry Styles and the rest of One Direction on their uh, first trip until the first general meeting when she decided to flex on everybody. <laughs> You know, you have to show people the possibilities. And so, yeah, I work with Daniel. Uh, we did uh, Harry Potter radio at Sirius XM. So I, yeah. Where, was Where were you? Where yeah, were you? <laughs> honestly. Um, so yeah, so we, uh, we, we work with Daniel. I think it's cute. I mean, I think Harry Potter fandom is, it's, you know, there's so many things to be fans of that are not like 
decent, like TikTok. Um, <laughs> oh, your favorite. So, yeah, my favorite. So to me, like just to have a character like that one where like, I don't know about you guys, but like I'm an adult. And when Dobie gets handed the sock, I'm like full on tears. I'm like, <laughs> this guy is finally free uh, from these evil masters. So I think it's cute. I do think that is a problem if people are leaving socks and trash on a beach, though, because I grew up in a beach and tourists be mean to the beach, you know? And so I think that it's it's okay to leave, I don't know, the, the little um, messages on the stones. That's okay. Stones, beach, but socks and the ocean, probably not a great idea. Yeah. Let's not leave our socks everywhere, guys. Let's leave them on your feet or put it in the laundry basket. But that is indeed the ending of the world's greatest program on earth. I mean, guys, this was an excellent show. Great time to be alive. Amina's still celebrating her birthday month. And she, I'm not sure she's going to be back next week or the week after. But anyways, whenever Amina comes back, because I know she's going on a vacation somewhere. All right. Amina's going. Amina's going places. Where are you going, Amina? Amina? Um, so the, the, the viewers people. don't need to know, guys. Viewers don't need to know. Campbell will be it's back in two weeks. JT will be back next week. Lana, okay. of course, next week. I'll be back next week as well on 90.3 WMC for Montclair. Guys, this has been the Morning Buzz, and we'll see you tomorrow with a different cast of characters. More importantly, next week, the A team, you know, the all the all stars, the dream team. Annabella, could you hit the little green button for me? You bet. Bye, guys. You are listening to 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair, where music stays cool. Cooler than Link on a Quest.